Okay, we're back. And, uh, yeah, so we just finished episode three of Arctic Adventure. It only took, like, an hour. <clears throat> so let's go straight into, uh, Arctic Adventure four. Episode four. Let's see. Story so far. You spring awake, pointing the .38 caliber revolver in the direction of the noise that awakened you. You relax a little as you see a small white seal slither by and disappear into the water. As you gather your gear together, you realise that you can't wait to get back to civilization and take a hot shower. Only one more map piece to find. Your quest is almost at an end. You stand facing another vast maze of ice caves. At least you know that somewhere out there lies more fame and adventure. So that whole build up to... Uh, Something was apparently following us, and it was it was a seal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I kind of expected it to be something like that. I don't see why they need to have a hook like that in the uh, episodes which you have to pay for. Usually they would end the first episode on something like that to, uh, you know, sort of entice people to uh, pay for the full version. What they do with like Monster Bash in Cosmo's Cosmic Adventure. Cosmo falls into the giant alien's mouth. It's like, oh no, will he survive? Turns out, yes, of course. Because <laughs> there's like two more episodes. Okay, let's continue on. Hmm, okay. Pickaxe up there. Pickaxe there, pickaxe there. Hot trap. Gun up there. Damn it! That looked like it was it was far down enough that I wouldn't have been hurt by it. Oh, boo! The textures on those purple blocks at the bottom of the screen actually remind me of something from Metroid. Now they have a vague sort of. I don't know, NES era style tiling to them or something. It's not actually a game I've ever uh, played. Metroid, the original one. Uh, the only ones I've actually played are uh, the Metroid Prime series. I've played the first and second one and finished them, uh, but I haven't finished the third one because... Uh, because it was a Wii. <laughs> I didn't find the controls particularly annoying, uh, but the Wii having a bit more effort required to like set it up again and that it uses the CDs and uh, no, or it uses the motion control and all that meant, uh, and also the fact that mine is uh, broken currently means that uh, I haven't returned to it to uh, play it. It was easy just to plug in the GameCube rather than set up the motion control and the bar for the Wii, which is simple enough, I know. You just have to stick it next to a TV, but it was an extra step, I suppose, which put me off playing it. Also, swinging your arms around is not kind of annoying. Or what was it? Flicking the nunchuck? Damn it. I think you had to use that to, like, get Samus to swing from grapple points attached to the roof or something like that. I remember it working well enough, but, eh. Still kind of wish you could have just used the GameCube controller. Since I really like that controller. I think it's probably the best one Nintendo has made. I need to repair mine. The rubber thumb tabs have fallen off both of my controllers. Ugh. 
I haven't found a appropriate uh, replacements in my searchings because I want to be sure that they've got rubber tabs on rubber uh, rub tabs on them and not just being solid plastic. I want them to be as uh, close to the original ones as possible. Damn it, I knew that was foolish. I'm happy for people that uh, Metroid Dread was it got has uh, been released recently, <laughs> considering how long people have been waiting for a new Metroid to game. Uh, I haven't looked into it myself because, well, I guess I want to play the ones earlier in the series because the Metroid Prime is sort of their own separate story, whereas I believe Metroid Dread is based off of the mainline story or like Fusion, I think it's called. I wasn't really aware there was a uh, consistent plot with the Metroid series. I thought it was just go here, shoot aliens, defeat Metroids, move on to next game with pretty much the same plot. But uh, apparently there is a bit of a continuous plot between the uh, between some of them. I mean, the Metroid Prime had a uh, continuous plot, so. Watch someone stream it look neat. I've seen a little bit of it. It looks pretty neat. I have to get used to the uh, 2D style of Metroid because seeing as I've mostly played Metroid Prime, uh, they're all three, they're all first person. So the idea of a 2D uh, Metroid game is uh, not something I'm very, I have any experience with. Oh, damn it. Did the same thing again. I tried to jump early so that I don't get shot by the bullet, but then I jumped too early. I just need to wait. I just need to wait, jump over the bullet. This level wouldn't be so diff uh, so annoying if it wasn't for these pitchforks here. I have to wait for them to uh, go up and down before I can progress. I'm pretty sure I can't go through that all part. I've played a little bit of Metroid 1 uh, on the uh, Nintendo Online system, but... Or oh, Nintendo Online service, but not really enough to uh, do anything than sort of move a few screens around and get, s get lost. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Yes, it wasn't so difficult, was it? Jeez. Okay, first level done. Ah. Uh, let me go and see if I can find... Okay, here we go. That's a lot of pickaxes. Five of them. Hmm. Ah. Okay. I can't actually jump out of that pit. Ah, it's not as easy as it first looks. Damn it. I didn't want to fall in there. Thank you. 
Right, I see where I need to go. Okay, that opens up that. There we go. I should probably have to get my GameCube out and play some games from it. Like what? I have F Zero GX. Uh, I never finished that, and I think that holds true for pretty much anyone who's played that game. F Zero GX is stupidly hard. The later mission, the later races of it are. Jeez, I think I got stuck on the Grand Prix mission because it's just. Here's a track, you're racing against 30 other racers, you have to come first, or when the track has no edges, and it's really narrow. And there's lots of obstacles which can blow your car up on it. It's just... Torturous is what it is. We'll just hover over these spikes here. Oh. Hang on. Anything there? Nope. What about there? Nope. Okay. Hold on. The bullet might be stopped by the boulder. Yeah, it looked like it was. At this point, I'm pretty sure that white button there, like, blocks off the exit or something. I'm tempted to go press it to see what it does. But since there's nothing else available in the level, um, I feel pretty confident in, like, I imagining what it does. So let's just leave it. Hey, there's a boat. Yeah, okay. Oh, this could get... Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, turn the sound off. No. Actually, hang on. How am I going to get up? Hmm. 
I gotta keep the sound off of this level because of the uh, dart traps down there. They will just be obnoxious. Huh. Ah. No! Come back here, block. There we go. Okay, so that opened that up. Ah, right. Yeah, that makes it easier. There we go. <laughs> oh. No. Damn it. So close. Yeah. It gives me points to shoot them, so let's shoot them. Oh. Bog. There we go. Okay. Let's continue and uh, put the sound back on. You can turn the sound on and off by pressing F1. It's nice that it's so convenient. What's that say? <laughs> shareware. <laughs> okay. I don't think this is shareware, but uh, sure. Oh, damn it, I wanted that. I wanted that gun. Idea for what ideas for level layers so for running thin on the on the mapping floor or on the design table. No, oh, okay, you can't actually get those other two. Uh, there we go. Oh. Ah, spikes. I was wondering when they were going to appear. Oh. Yeah, and spikes can't be placed on these uh, half height blocks, it seems. Okay. I don't have to go back, do I? No? Okay, good. Oh. Oh. 
Wait, what? <laughs> There's a pop-up gun there too. Okay. That's the first I've se I saw of that. This block's missing a part of it. Oh no, it's because it was a... Oh, okay. I think because this block is a little bit lower than, the, than they are normally because there was a button here. It's putting me in line for that gun to shoot. I was wondering why it was shooting at me. I wonder why those blocks appeared there. Is it just in case you didn't get the uh, pickaxe down there so you can't go back for it? If you missed it, why would you not pick it up on the way? Hmm. Oh well. Uh, okay, so five pickaxes. Huh? Where do I want to go? Uh, ah, that loops back around. Okay, yep, I want to drop down here. Ah, boulder. Squished. There's a boulder over there as well. We're making progress. We just have to find out where all these uh, boulders are. Snowballs. Whatever. Drop down here now. Another boulder? 
No! Okay. Nothing there. Let's go. Okay. Uh, up here then. Nope. Gone there. Let's have a look around here. Hey, there's one. Hmm. Ah, boulder. Ah, boulder. Ah, boulder. Ah! There we go. <laughs> that worked! Another one? Nope. Good. Okay, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to go press that red button there before I go for that key. Oh! oh. Uh. There we go. Pretty sure I can jump up that if I There we go. If you're right on the edge, you can jump up. There we go. That saving noise is similar to the one which is made in uh, the first Commander Keen, where if you uh, step on the Yorps, I think they're called, and you stun them. Oh, look, the uh, stalactites only fall if you're below them, not just if you're. Uh, in the columns next to them. Okay. Uh, yep. <laughs> Good. Nice, nice. I'm actually going to be able to get everything in this uh, bonus room. No hidden thing, so.
I wonder what the payoff for all this will be. Will I get a certificate I can print off? <laughs> I'm just going to have to wait. There we go. Surprised I haven't had any of these pick pickaxe, uh, these pick, uh, these pitchforks uh, going horizontally. Okay, here's one. Saw you. <laughs> no, he clipped the brim of my hat. It's difficult to keep yourself, like, within a single block of, uh, space. here. Yeah, okay. Rather straightforward, simple level. Jeez. Maybe it had something to do with the falling blocks. Anyway. Uh, okay. Let's go here. Hmm. This is reminiscent to the first level. Or the first episode. Uh oh. 
No! Ah, hmm. No, I need all these picks. I can't, uh, dodge one of them. Uh, there we go. Ah, uh, hmm. Okay, let's go over here. There we go. Damn it! Well, I didn't mean to cause that block to start going up again, but uh, oh well. I would hit that. And still I jumped. Uh. I was hoping I could fall onto it. Was it far down enough? Okay, here we go. Huh. Damn it! Too early. What? Go up, you block. Did the bullet stop it from move, stop it from going up? Hmm. And I did press spacebar there, but uh, it decided I didn't need to jump. I guess that would make sense if the uh, bullet is like noted as an as an entity like my character is then it would have a bounding box and if that bounding box hit the uh, underside of a ice block then it would cause it to uh, change direction just like me hmm So that time it didn't. Hmm. I don't know. 
There we go. Okay, can we go to another place over here? Yep, here we go. Let's get that. I messed that up. There we go. There's a case where I have to stay like perfectly in the middle between the uh, spikes and that falling falling rock. to think how I nearly done this the first time around. I feel like the best way to get that is uh, to jump earlier and then get it on the descending arc of your jump. That way you spend as little time as possible. Because you're like falling away from the bullet, you have a bit more time than if you just jump straight up in spot. Maybe. I, I, uh, maybe you can just jump straight up and get it. Ah. Uh.
That'd probably be one of the most torturous uh, traps I could do in this game. Just have a corridor where you can't jump and you have to step in between uh, singly spaced uh, spike traps. You would have to just like position yourselves perfectly, say like 20 times in a row. That would be, uh, yeah. Because you'd have to stand right in between both of them. I don't think there's much leeway. I feel like your character is maybe a little bit narrower than a full square, but I'm not sure. That may just be an illusion on my part. Okay. Bikes. Jump. There we go. Ah. Now. Uh. We went this way, didn't we? We did that one. We went in there. Let's see, what's over here? Nothing there. That just loops around. Oh, well. There's a cave. Uh, let's do this one first. Where am I? Okay, there. I wonder what the difference between the falling spikes and the falling, uh, rocks are. I don't think there is one. I think it's just completely visual. They both behave the same. another key. Let's go in here. Whoa. Yeah, those spikes there are, uh, unsynced again.
There we go. Uh, that went just around. There's the last level. Okay, let's go over this way. Oh, I've done that one. Uh, in here? Oh, I just slid right over that gap. <laughs> I didn't think you could, I didn't realize you could do that. That's seven pickaxes. I think that's the most which we've ever needed to have. There we go. Uh, yeah. I don't have a key for that. Okay. There better be a level, uh, not blocked off by a door, which has another key in it still. Th that's what I was talking. That's what this is. What I this that would be what I was what I meant earlier by uh these old games make me very wary because uh, they might do something like that. You know, stopping you from uh, accessing a level because you used a key in a level which didn't give you a key back or something like that. So you're just one key short and you can't finish the game. It's just kind of... Mm. Okay, there's a key. Oh, well, I can only save. Sure. So far, this game has actually been uh, perfectly fine in that regard. Did those ice platforms actually change direction when I loaded again? Hmm. It looks like they're not resetting to their original position completely. Maybe they are. I just misremembered where they started. Because it looks like they're in a consistent position now. Damn it. But I want all the gems. Ha <laughs> 
There we go. No. Damn it. You think, aha, I gotta land on a platform down there. I gotta be safe. Nope. Saved. Hooray! That would probably be faster if I just died and tried again. That's mean there. Okay. The uh, half blocks up the top there. Uh, th they're positioned so that you bump your head on them and it cuts your forward momentum, meaning that you fall short of the next platform. What was another bad platform which I used to, which I played a bit of in the day? Um, I've already mentioned this, uh, Jetsons one, which I remember. Gonna have to see whether I can find a copy of that. Um, there was another one based on the, uh, the Blues Brothers, <laughs> which, looking back on it, okay, really, uh, platformer based on the Blues Brothers. I mean, I really like that film. It's a great film. But, uh... Odd premise for a platforming game. Oh, well. Um, but yeah. That had interesting mechanics in it. You could pick up crates and you would throw them at people. Um... And I think you were collecting, like, records for points or something like that. I remember the levels looking pretty neat. At least at the time. Because you're like running around in a shopping center. Damn it. Um, and you could go into the stalls or into the shops, which was neat. Um, but my friends and I could never get past the first level, so yeah. And I think I've read reviews on it later on. It's like, it's not a very good game at all. I can't even remember the company which makes it, which made it. But I remember it was kind of neat just because you could like, movement was pretty quick. like slide around grabbing the crates and hurling them and they'd sort of bounce around the level a little bit which is pretty novel but uh hmm. uh any other ones which i can think of not really a platformer but there was a game called paganitsu which i should probably show off at some point. That's a game which I would like to do a video on, but I don't know whether I'd finish it, because it's it's really a puzzle game. It's kind of like a... I guess it's kind of like a more puzzle... It's like a puzzly version of... Uh, I think the game's called Boulder Dash. 
Well, it's got elements of boulder dash in it, where you have to, like, mine dirt out from underneath boulders and, uh, carefully make them fall onto enemies and, uh, in positions where they're not going to crush you. Though I think Paganitsu is more like... There's more obstacles in the levels. There's things like you have to block off a square which is generating lava so you can get to other areas, or... or water so you can, uh, get to other sections. It's all based on a grid, too, top-down, so... Um, I think you can maybe push the rocks around? There's things like spiders which you have to trap behind rocks and I think they might maybe turn into gems when they die. Um, I have actually watched a full playthrough of Paganitsu, and I think the sequel, or the uh, predecessor of it, called Chaganitsu. <laughs> um, but uh, I've never played the sequel to it or whatever. Where's this other level? Come on. That's not so much of a platformer. Oh, uh, yeah, so I don't know whether I'd complete that because a lot of it might just be me sitting there trying to figure out how to do puzzles mm. it's a platformer of uh, Super Mario which I'd like to show off it's pretty well known it's a uh, it's like a homebrew version of the original Mario Brothers there we go. However, I don't think it was ever finished. So the, uh... The, uh... Version... So it, uh, goes through the first level. You go into the underworld, level 1-2, and, uh, you drop into a pit, and you can't escape. And it's just like, oh, okay. I guess I can't do anything else now. I remember I would return to that game a few times thinking maybe I was doing something wrong, but nope. It's just unfinished. Graphics were really nice in it though. I don't remember how it handled. Probably not similar to the original Murray Brothers. Or Super Mario Brothers rather. Uh, it was Jill of the Jungle. I used to play that a bit. Uh, only the shareware version, though. I remember that being cool because you had different animal transformations which you could use to get around. You could turn into a fish or a uh, bird and shoot like flaming discs around the place. There we go. Earthquake cave opens up. Last level. But then we're getting into lazy games by that one, because then you have like Jazz Jack Rabbit, which I liked the demo the uh shareware version of. Never played the full version. And I haven't played uh Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. I kind of like the first one a bit more visually. Because I think Jazz is a bit larger on screen than he is in Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. Um I think it's also just a case of I think Jazz Jack Rabbit 1 has nicer pixel art. I think Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 has got more like I'm not too sure. Might be like drawn sprites or something. Here we go. Like it? <laughs> I would have had to have to have uh, gotten to the end of it, I guess. <laughs> I was expecting a level where it's full of, full of traps rather than just a, uh, you know. Well, there you go. Oh, well, you can press a button from below. I didn't realise that. I was expecting the hardest level out of all of them. Oh, well. Hello. Welcome, welcome, Griffin God. Let your food just annoy me. No, please. <laughs> Annoy me all you wish. We're nearly finished with this, so I'll swap over to our Warhammer 2, Total War. 
This has only taken like another hour. We mm -hmm. finished episode three, so we ended up finishing episode four within an hour. How about that? Do I like it? Yeah. As I said before, Arctic Adventure. It's it's an all right platformer, considering the uh, platformers which weren't very good for DOS. Uh, it stands out a bit in that regard. I was expecting maybe some more things different in the uh, extra episodes, considering you're paying for them. I would have thought there would have been, at, at the very least, some new sprites. Um, if not some new enemies or some different traps, something like that. But nope, it really was just 30, uh, 60 more levels of the same. Yeah, yeah well. Uh, can we pick up this map, please? <laughs> I guess we could just stand on it. Oh, there we go. I found a piece of the map. You have the following pieces of the map collected. Hooray, all of them. There we go. X marks the spot. Having just found the final piece of the map, you lean against the wall and let out a heavy sigh of relief. As you back, as your back touches the wall, you hear a small click, then silence. You stand there frozen and just listen. Seconds pass and nothing happens. Just as though you are about to move, you hear a massive creaking within the walls. With no more warning, four giant walls slam down from the ceiling and encase you in a frozen tomb. It is dark inside, so you light a torch so that you can see. Looking at the wall behind you, you see the small plate switch in the wall. It looks just like a brick, but you should have seen it. You let the act of finding the final piece of the map cloud your senses and it just might have killed you. You examine the walls that have you trapped. There is no way out. The walls are granite and are at least three feet thick. You have no tools with you that could possibly dig your way out here. Because apparently pickaxes are a single use. How could you have been so careless? You sit against the wall to ponder your fate. A half an hour later, you are still sitting against the wall, staring at your torch getting dimmer. Suddenly, you hear the walls start to rumble again. As you prepare for death, you hear some words over all the noise. Hey kid, you better get out here quick. You see a small gap between the floor and one of the massive slabs. Wasting no time, you roll under the opening. You look back inside and see that you left a final, pe map, pe final map piece there. With cat-like reflexes, you reach in and grab the map, just as the granite slab slams down for the final time. Looking up, you see the face of the man who has just saved you. The man is obviously pleased with himself. I'd have gotten out of there in a few more minutes anyway, Dr. Jones. Sure, kid, I know. I was just getting bored out here by myself. What are you doing here, anyway? I had some vacation time coming to me and changed my mind about joining you. So you're the one who's been following me. Yeah, but you didn't make it easy. I'm not as young as I used to be. Did you find all of the map? Yeah, the map's... The treasure cave is clearly marked. You both leaned over and examined the map. You suggest an idea. Let's go back to town, get cleaned up, and come back to the cave later. It's close by and well, hi and well hidden, so... And it's waited this long. Sounds good to me. Besides, you know I hate the cold. Dr. Jones starts to walk off. Hey, Doc, thanks for saving my hide back there. I got careless and, forget it, kid, I owe my life to more people than I can count. It comes with the trade. You grab your pack and start to hike back to the small mining town. Hey, Doc, have you ever heard of a lost diamond mines of Africa? Dr. Jones lets out a loud, loud laugh and pats you on the back. Later, kid, later. I hope you enjoyed this game. Look for more Nevada Smith adventures in the future. I don't think there is any. George Broussard. Yay, new high score. Oh, well, damn it! <laughs> I didn't put in my high score! No! <laughs> Nobody will know who got the high score in this. Oh! Christmas is ruined. Oh well. Not like anyone else is going to play this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That is all of Arctic Adventure. Yeah, I said about all that I want with it. It is what it is. It's fine. I don't mind it too much. As I said, it handles alright. Hitboxes are a bit Eh. You have to realise they're a bit larger than the character model is, so, yeah, just, a, a, you know, account for that, and, uh, it's fine, really. Um, there is some, there is some one before this, because this is actually a sequel. There was, uh, Pharaoh's Tomb before this one, and I think I did play a bit of that, I, I think I did play the shareware version of that back in the day, as well. Um, not as much as Arctic Adventure. Um, yeah, I should probably do that one as well at some point. Sometime. Probably not soon. But yeah. As I said, 
This is apparently available on Steam. I don't think it's any different. It's not like a updated re-release of it. It's just a release of it on Steam. The uh, images they have on Steam are not very high quality. They've got terrible uh, JPEG crustiness to them. Uh, I don't think it would be really worth purchasing. It's kind of more just the novelty of its time than anything else. It'd be neat if it came with a level maker. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I can do with this? Hmm. Can I do something with this? Hold on. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hold on. Let me just try something. Using a new hard drive, there is programs which I should have on my computer, but I don't have. So I am just going to uh, acquire one. Hang on. Is that the right one? I guess it is. Let's get that. Okay. Just install this. <laughs> this might not work, so... Uh, sure. There we go. Uh, no, I don't run it. Okay, let's go edit there. Uh, that doesn't really change anything for the better, does it? Mm, can I change? It doesn't help that I know nothing about programming. There we go. Did that work? Let me have a look. Just load up the game again. It kind of worked. Uh, <laughs> okay, it wasn't as simple as uh, just editing the text in the file. <laughs> hmm. I tried to write in Mech4 won the game in the high score table, but uh, apparently it doesn't appreciate my edit. Because we've hit a runtime error. Oh dear. Oh well. Oh, has it gone to, uh, <laughs> okay. It's gone to the DOS prompt. Well, there we go. So much for my little, uh, attempt at encoding. I downloaded Notepad++ to, uh, try and edit it. But, uh, yeah, it didn't work. Wop wop. Uh, can I do something like open the exe file? I don't know what it would be encoded in, so it's just filling up with a whole bunch of nulls, and I don't understand that. I am no programmer. Hang on. Okay, let's see. Language. Hmm. I have no idea what programming language this game is done in. I know it was done on an engine called Fast. Uh, let's see. Can I find that out by going to the wiki? Uh, let's see. Arctic Adventure Game. Because I think there's a book with the same title. Uh, engine is fast. Da, 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 da. Nope. Oh. Okay. Uh, language. Uh. Yeah, I have no idea of what program what programming language this could have been written in. Hang on, MS DOS style. Nope. I can at least 
rule out a bunch of these, I think, come on along uh, quite a bit later. Visual basic? No. Action script? Nope. Assembly? Nope. <laughs> Okay, never mind. That's just me messing around with it. Okay, well, that's it. That's going to be Arctic Adventure. That's his uh, volume four of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I enjoyed it. It's for its simplicity. Um, yeah, and I hope you join me again next time when, I don't know, we have a look at another ancient DOS game. <laughs>